Now we're going to play the, uh, the video from the councilman. Yeah, this is Phil Bailick, who's a leader, city council leader. And I, I'm fascinated by this because uh, it's, a, it's a video. It was uploaded on the 14th of October, Exeter City Council YouTube channel. And it's in the street. It is uh, on co corner sort of Queen Street going towards Harlequins. Well, Harlequins is in the background. And I've, for a long time, well, a couple of years now, been thinking about using uh, outdoor locations as ways to sequence conversation. So I've done some of this on Lancaster University campus, and I'm trying to do it in Kendall as well, just so that you use spaces as having a significance. Um, so a campus, Ex Exeter campus is a bit... It's a bit um, spread out and it's kind of circular and you can't you can't have a, a linear progression. You can't tell a story easily in it as you can in Lancaster. That's my, my opinion. But I think in in Exeter there are various places we could say that they are, are uh, symbolic backgrounds. Yeah. So Harlequins is... I don't know if it's the first one, but it's certainly one place where... A mall, a shopping centre, in a city centre, uh, is going to be demolished to make way for student accommodation. Mm. Um, and I don't, I don't know if that's specifically mentioned in this, but Harlequins is in the background, so it must be relevant to this. So we'll we'll, we'll talk a bit more about this after after we after we play it. It uh, is a thriving community. We need to keep it at the top where it currently is, and we will be able to do that. And we want to talk to anybody who wants to come here, invest in Exeter. But it's got to be on the basis that they are giving something back to the residents of Exeter. And we believe this is just one way. At the end of the day, I know people have a lot of strong views about students and their accommodation. HMOs, houses of multiple occupancy, have not risen greatly over the years. And that is because of purpose-built student accommodation. But the time has come to revisit that, and we are doing that. But students will be coming to Exeter. The Exeter University is an expanding university. It's one of the best in the country and Europe. So we have to work together to maintain that important university that we have here in the city. As I always say, the, the students are our children effectively. They learn their life lessons from us. And so perhaps uh, if they're living alongside us and we alongside them, it's about having a balanced community and that's what we want to do. Particularly here in the St David's Ward, which has seen a lot of student accommodation. They've seen their life change in this area. Uh, this is a city centre ward and we have to have developments that reflect the city centre and reflect our communities and we have to balance them. It will allow key workers, we've got some big agencies here in Exeter, the RDE, and uh, the police, we've got the Met Office, a lot of young professionals want to move into Exeter, this could be ideal living and it could be for older people, hey, people like myself even, if that's what we want to do, but it will be different living. Uh, they will be car free. We are talking to developers about having those alternatives for uh, club cars, uh, electric bikes, all those alternatives that we need to have. You know, we've got to make this city carbon neutral by 2030. And this will be just one step on that long road. So I didn't know that the, the, the accommodation was open to anybody no. who could go into it. But maybe it is. Will would be able to afford to invest in it. Well, I'm not sure I'd invest in it, John. Well, look, all right, you, you, you. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I haven't got that much loose money. Well, you but know. I've just asked. That actually, you bring in my first question, which is: is somebody's investing in all this student accommodation? Well, I certainly. How sensible is it? Well, because I just, I just feel that that he he has a point. Mm. Um. But the thing, the one one thing he brought up, you know, bringing up about the student accommodation is fine, but then he started going on about electric bikes and electric cars. Well, I think he wants to reassure us that all these students living in the middle of Exeter will never, never have any calling for a car. They haven't got a car hidden away anywhere, and it will not add to the traffic. 
Well, and they will all stick on the buses, possibly bicycles. Not, not, not every, not some, not most students have a car. You think? You think? No, because most of the students use taxis. Ah. But they're from very rich background. Most you reckon? So that's your 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 guess is that they're all very very rich and are using taxis all the time. Most of them, most of the Chinese students are. Oh. I can guarantee you that because. They, I use the same taxi firm as them. Oh, right. And I have a chat with them. I have a chat with taxi drivers. Right. So, and then they, you know, they they, they, they use taxis all the time. They, they could exercise and walk, but they prefer to use taxis. And they put all their taxi fares on, the on their cars for their parents to pay. Well, OK. So, this is, this is hearsay. So... But but I I should just add that we were well, well, John John before we carry on speculating because I might speculate a little bit or make remarks based on information that may or may not be reliable. Well, I'm only saying what I'm hearing in the community. To my okay, well that's fair enough, John. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm just going to say that we welcome guests. We do welcome guests, and any uh, anybody that wants to come on the show is more than welcome. And uh, yeah, you're more than welcome. And if you if you. If you disagree with uh, what I've what what we what we're saying, uh, please come forward and uh, say so. I mean, uh, we're, we're always up for hearing other pe uh, what other people has to say about this wonderful community in Exeter. Um, and uh, please feel free to come forward. And I, I would also like to say this student accommodation is going to last for twenty or thirty years. I mean, it, it, the buildings are pretty good buildings, generally speaking. Well, considering we're one they're of they're not going to fall over, are they? Considering we're one of the top universities in Europe, he said. Well, yeah, I'm thinking in, in, I think Exeter University is sort of top ten in the UK and top two or three hundred. So it's on the list. It's yeah. on the list, which means. One, OK, let's go to that bit of it. The consequence of that is it can expand the numbers of students it wants to recruit, more or less indefinitely. Mm -hmm. It's got a very plausible brand. Yeah. So if it wants to double the number of students it's got on the campus, it can do that. Mm -hmm. The only problem then is where to put them. Yeah. So if it wants to spend two or three hundred million quid on new buildings, mm. um, it can on yes. a cash flow projection kind of point of view yes but is it a mountain of debt because uh, you're saying there are there, okay let's say there are not if they've eight, got eight thousand taxi cab fees which are on the credit card well, somewhere well, so if they all get fantastic jobs that's fine well can i say something most most of the most of the no most of the most of the um presuming they will uh they they will get you presuming they will get fantastic jobs that's fine but it might it might lead it might lead us will is correct it might lead us into into debt so if this it just seems to me a question whether this um 9000 pounds basic fee undergraduate is where's that where is that coming from and what kind of projections have been based on that and also, given given the move online of lots of things like the MOOCs and online degrees now, quite a well, lot of qualifications anyway, um, is there going to be the need for the campus? And if there's not the need for the campus, will they need the student accommodation? I think there would be a need for the campus because you can only do a certain amount of. Um, I think people could only do a certain amount of uh, online learning I think face to face is is um is is going to be still needed I, I really do I, I don't think people should stay, stay, stay close to I don't think people should be all relying on online learning it works for some people for some people it doesn't um so I think I think the campus is uh, will be still needed and I think the campus is needed I, and I think to 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 rely to to rely students to to completely re rely um, completely rely on online learning is a, a bad move. So I do think this, the, the the campus is going to be needed, and obviously they know that because they they're investing all this money in student accommodation. Well, okay, the, it's 
I, I agree with you. I think some sort of blended learning is 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 what's going to work. Yeah, but I don't what, think they what should. the proportion of it is, though. I, I I haven't seen any sort of scenario or planning beyond the next three years or so mm. as to what they think the numbers are going to be, or the proportions going to be of what's online and what yeah. isn't. And so there's all of that. And then the other thing I'll just say very briefly is that. Um, the coach station, well, there is no coach station. The bu- what, what was the, the bus and coach station is going to be a bus station. Yeah. So I don't think there's any sort of cafe or waiting room overnight. But there's right. a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of coaches setting off in various directions between about uh, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, let's say. So if there is an all-night cafe or restroom or something in one of the buildings, <laughs> I think that should be open to the public. Yes. The travelling coach people. Right. So I put that forward as a positive suggestion. Right. And also, I mean, I'll just say, I think it's an excellent thing. Um, as we said, any, any, any guest is welcome from Exeter City Council or Exeter University or anybody who's got a view on these things. Um, but the idea of just making uh, opinion pieces in the Exeter streets, um, taking Harlequins, or, well, there's other places, there's other student accommodation if that's in the background somewhere. Um, whatever you think about this sort of thing. Uh, and then maybe they can all be edited together. If they're, I, I haven't checked the licence on this, but if it's... Um, my goodness, I've just been offered a, month, a free month of YouTube Premium. Wow, I haven't logged in. Anyway, sorry, I'm just not... Um, I'm, bit, I'm confused by this... Uh, I will check the, 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 the copyright on this. If if you put a, a YouTube uh, clip up with Creative Commons, uh, you can re-edit. Somebody else could re-edit it. Um, so I don't. I mean, we'd ask people before doing that, probably. But in theory, anybody can offer an opinion. The, the, there was quite a lot of street noise on that one, wasn't it? You could hear the buses and yes, everything. Yes. Yes. That's all right. I don't think that matters. No. I think. Um, and, and any, basically anybody who's got an opinion is on, on the streets of Exeter somewhere with a significant building in the background uh, it can all be it can all be cobbled together mm-hmm. and we'll select some of it I think it's hard to plan over trial yes I think you're right John we, it, it, we, need, we need a producer really who tells us we've we t- been speaking too long we need to plan over trial yes you carry on then